Hey, what's going on everybody? Jamie McDonald here with an unboxing video. And I hate when I have to sit on product for so long and not be able to talk about it, but the embargo has lifted and I can now talk about this camera with everybody. And this is the newest addition to the Olympus OMD line. And it is the EM10. I know that there's been a lot of information leaked on rumor sites, uh, some of it not quite all true. So we'll get to some of that a little bit later. Generally my unboxing videos, I don't go into too much detail about specs or anything, but I will mention a few of the specs that all the rumor sites seem to have gotten wrong. So first let's open it up. And just like the last uh, OMD, the EM1, it comes in uh, the nice new stylish packaging and you can see it's a little worse for the wear. I've kind of beaten it up a little bit here. I apologize for that. And inside of this package, uh, software and quick start manual. I'm not going to open it up. Nobody wants to look at manuals. Who reads those, right? Now let's see. Warranty card. And let's see what we have here. This little plastic cloth here. What do we have? Ah, uh, just joking. Lens cap box. Where's the camera? You said EM10, Jamie, right? Well, come on, you guys. I've been sitting on this thing for like a week. Do you think I'm going to leave it in the box and not shoot with it? <laughs> I don't think so. So let's get the box out of the picture here. And let's bust out the OMD EM10. And there you have it, the EM10. Um, no, the strap does not come with the camera. Sorry, folks. This is actually a actually a kick-ass handmade leather strap from a gentleman in New York. Uh, the name of the company is Tap and Die. Yeah, I'm giving them a little plug here just because the product is so incredibly awesome. Uh, Tapanddye.com. Just swing over and check them out. All right, back to the camera. A little smudged up here with fingerprints. So what do we have? What are the differences between, let's say, the EM5 and the EM10? Um, the improved viewfinder like you would find on the EM1, it's not the same resolution as the EM1, but it does have some of the features. Uh, the updated uh, sensor, the eye sensor, is on this one. It also has the dimming feature built into this one that the EM5 does not have. Um, what other differences do we have? Let's see. Well, we've got this little button right here. It looks like a flash button because, yes, it does have a flash on board. For those asking, no, this does not swivel all the way up. You're not going to bounce something this small off the ceiling. I mean, come on, think about it. So, other features. I wanted to mention something that I said that some of the rumor sites have gotten a few things wrong about this camera. Um, one of the things that really jumps out at me that they got wrong with this is that uh, everybody keeps stating that the ISO starts off at 200. Yeah, that's the native ISO, but like the EM1, it has a uh, ISO 100, I guess like a extended ISO, if you will. So that's one of the things that seems to get uh, misstated about this camera is that it's ISO 200 when in fact it can go down to ISO 100. Um, what else do we have on here that seems to be a misstatement? Yes, it is only three axis image stabilization, but when you flip into video mode, if you start recording video, you have five axis image stabilization available for video. So for people who want to shoot video with this camera, uh, five axis image stabilization is definitely going to make that possible. In order to integrate a uh, pop-up flash into this camera, you notice that the, the full pentaprism on the top here is smaller than it would be on, say, the, uh, the EM1 or the EM5 for that matter. And that is because those cameras also have an accessory port. This camera does not have the accessory port. So um, that's how we're allowed to get an integrated flash into this camera. Um, just like the EM1 and the EP5, 
this also has the uh, the built-in Wi-Fi, which is pretty rad. I use this way more than I would have ever imagined using Wi-Fi in a camera. I'll be the first to admit that. Um, what else do we have here? Oh, okay. So let me talk about this. I already did an unboxing video for the 14 to 42. Um, when you see me unbox, well, not really unbox the EM10, but uh, when I opened the box, there was a box already in there. And that was for this lens cap that's on the 14 to 42 right now. It's, I know it's kind of hokey, kind of cheesy to some people, but to me it is super rad. It's the lens cap to ends all lens caps. Uh, it's got a mechanical iris, I guess you might call it, that closes and protects the lens. So when you turn on the camera, it automatically opens. You turn off the camera, and it closes. Yes, I'm going to wear my battery down just playing with that and watching it. <laughs> Pretty cool. Um, yeah, so this is just, I mean, a really brief walkthrough of the EM10. I just wanted to get it out of the box. Well, it's already been out of the box. I just wanted to get it in front of the camera to show you guys. Um, if you have any questions, you know the drill. You just put the questions down in the comment section below, and I will do my best to answer them as fast as I possibly can for you guys. Um, ask detailed questions about this camera because it is a little different than the EM5 and the uh, EM1. I guess this would be positioned more like the, the entry level because it is not weather sealed. Um, it doesn't have the 10 frames per second like the EM1. It's 8 frames per second, so it's not, you know, right up at that level. It does have a full metal frame in the camera, so it is extremely solidly built. But again, it is not weather sealed like the EM5 or the EM1. And, oh, something else that I want to note, too. It does not take the same battery as the other two OMDs. It actually takes a BLS5, which is, for all you pen users out there, you know this battery. So same battery as the pen line. And also your uh, SD card is housed right there in the bottom as well with the battery on this camera. Just thought I should probably point that out to you guys because I know batteries seem to be the, the big thing that people like to talk about. Um, and speaking of batteries, there is an accessory grip for this, but it is a non-powered grip. It's just something to give you a better handhold on the camera. And one of the cool things about that grip, and I don't have one here with me yet, um, not available to me yet, is uh, the way that the grip attaches to the camera you can actually still access your battery with the grip on. The way that it mounts up, it allows you to have access to your battery. Um, so yeah, that's it. Just a really, really quick, brief walkthrough of the, uh, of the OMD EM10. Uh, when this has lifted, you guys can swing over to my Flickr page. Um, and you can see some sample shots from it taken there. Of course, no raw processing yet because it is so new. Uh, so everything that I'm posting with this camera is straight out of camera JPEG. Um, and actually, I've just left the JPEG settings alone. I haven't done any customizing to them at all. They're just, like I said, straight out of camera. So you guys hit me up with questions. You know, that's kind of how I like to do this. The more questions, the better. Uh, and they don't have to be limited to just the EM10 either. I mean, if you've got a question about the, four, the new 14 to 42 pancake that I've got sitting on it right now, or even a question about the, uh, the little lens cap here with the automatic iris on it, shoot them, shoot them my way. If you've got questions about these super dope straps that I'm starting to sport now, definitely hit me up on that. I'd like to put you guys in touch with the guy that makes them. Um, because not only do I have a neck strap on my EM10, get that out of the way here, on my EP5, I've got this super sweet wrist strap too. Uh, again, all handmade, you know, one at a time. Each one is a unique individual work of art. Uh, and again, the name of this company is Tap and Die, and they're based out of New York. Pretty cool stuff. Um, and you can expect a review on those shortly. I'm going to let these break in for a little bit, get worn in, and uh, do a follow-up review on these straps. But so far, they're pretty rad. Uh, that's it for now, you guys. Uh, 
for those who've asked an update on my wife, she's doing awesome. Uh, she just finished up her third round of chemotherapy last week, and she's actually physically feeling a lot better through this one, which is kind of crazy because generally they get kind of harder as they go, but she's a trooper anyway, so she's doing really good. And uh, all the thoughts and prayers that you guys send our way mean a lot, and I think it really helps. So with all that said, uh, shoot the questions my way, and I'll keep the, the reviews coming. And if you guys want follow-up reviews, like something where it's been, you know, three or four months down the road and you want to pick my brain about something, let me know and I'll do follow-up reviews on how things are handling and how they're uh, holding up to, to the abuse that I might put them through. So that's that, you guys. Uh, the EM10 in 10 minutes. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Hey guys, I just wanted to take a second to apologize for just how out of focus that video was. When I completed uh, doing the recording and dumped it into Final Cut, I noticed that it just looked horrible. Um, I'll reshoot something for you guys at a little bit later date that's not quite so shoddy. Um, in the meantime, I figured I'd throw a few of these still photos that I took earlier in the day um, into the end of the video here so you could kind of get a different look at the camera. Uh, these were more, I guess, product shots for uh, Tap and Die, the strap manufacturer. And I guess it shows you guys uh, the quality of the straps as well. Uh, again, take care. Thanks for dropping in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and please comment and ask questions and share this video. Peace out.